Rigidity, when we think of the word rigid, we think of something that lacks flexibility, something that doesn't bend easily. Um, I want you to completely erase that definition from your brain, and I want you to supplant it with a new definition. And this definition is uh, one that I learned from Jules Mitchell. Highly recommend Jules Mitchell's biomechanics blog. Rigidity is your body's connective tissue's ability to resist permanent deformation. That sounds like a good thing now, doesn't it? Permanent deformation is instability, inherent instability going forward. So we do wanna resist permanent deformation. Extensibility is your body's ability to deform impermanently. In other words, it's your body's ability to stretch or deform and then return to form. Your soft tissues are geniusly defined to be able to deform impermanently. They allow for movement at your joints to happen as a result. They're also designed to be able to resist permanent deformation. I wanna illustrate the difference between these two concepts of rigidity and extensibility using these inanimate objects, these therabands, which are much less exquisitely designed than your soft tissues, but might illustrate really clearly the difference between extensibility and rigidity and show you why rigidity is a really good thing to have in your connective tissues. Okay, so uh, this yellow band is called the light uh, variety, so it's easy to pull apart essentially, and this is the black band and it's, it's a little harder to pull apart. So we could say that this band has more rigidity it resists deformation better than this band, which is like, woo! This band and this band, they both come with a warning label that says, do not stretch beyond five times the length of this band. And what, why? Because beyond five times the length of the band, you, you start to take this elastic material into its failure region and you risk snapping the band apart. Now, isn't it interesting that this has more rigidity than this, but their threshold for extensibility is the same. So I think that something that happens a lot of the times is that we confuse a lack of extensibility with the notion that it's because we have too much rigidity. And in layman's terms, that is sort of how we think about it. But in biomechanical terms, I want you to, to think about rigidity in terms of a tissue's ability to resist injury. And that a more rigid tissue is not a less extensible tissue. Let me illustrate this point using these bands to lift a kettlebell. Okay, so I got the yellow TheraBand. Remember, this is the, the lighter band. It's the less rigid band. I'm gonna weave it around the handle of this 20 pound kettlebell. And I'm gonna to try to show to you that I'm gonna grab it at about, I don't know, six to eight inches away from the handle. And then I'm gonna start it from a slacking position. So I just want you to notice um, what the length of the band is. And let's just see how much uh, I'll have to pull on it until it lifts the kettlebell up. Okay, I don't want it to fail, so <laughs> I'm going to go with the fact that it didn't lift the kettlebell up. It simply elongated and elongated and elongated and elongated until I was actually afraid that I might rip it in half. Let's take a look at the black band. I'm going to hold it about eight inches, six to eight inches away from the handle, and let's see how far I have to pull on this elastic material before it lifts the kettlebell. Oh look, it lifted the kettlebell. In order to increase the rigidity of your tissues, you have to load them to 70% of their strength capacity, okay? You think about what your body weighs and uh, the poses that you do in yoga where you can hold up your body weight, like handstand, for example. That's pretty strong. Um, how easy is it for you to do handstand? How easy it is, is it for you to do any pose in which you have to hold yourself up? You want it to be close to impossible. You want it to be 
something that you can't do for very long until you have to come out and rest because what that means is that you're loading the tissue to a threshold in which it's going to adapt and ultimately get stronger, add rigidity. If yoga asanas, as they advance, do so in a way that asks your joints to acquire deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper ranges of motion, but then doesn't also ask your tissues to be able to lift heavier and heavier and heavier loads. Remember that you're only ever dealing with your body weight in the classic, uh, it, in the classic method of doing yoga asana. So your body weight likely isn't changing more than a couple of pounds over the years. Um, meanwhile, the ranges of motion that you're subjecting your joints to are, you can end up in a situation where your tissue's rigidity cannot adapt quick enough to keep up with the ever-increasing extensibility that you're exploring. So what can we do about that? How can we keep pace with that degree of extensibility by enhancing our tissue rigidity? I'm going to show you a couple of tricks in the coming uh, video blogs that I've incorporated into my personal practice and that have made a world of difference, not only in the way that my joints feel, but also in my practice. So stay tuned.